Hello everyone and welcome to the Merns Tag. In this video we'll create a slide puzzle. As you can see we have a slide puzzle here with 3 into 3 grid with, uh, with numbers 1 to 8 and we have to solve them by sliding them left, above, when you click right arrow or when you click up arrow, left arrow. So you can move the slide puzzles uh, one at a time and you can try to solve them and try to arrange all of them in order. Right? So whenever you click refresh, it will reload and it will shuffle the positions of the puzzle. So everything will be created using vanilla JavaScript and let us get started. So first create a new folder called slide puzzle and open up your code editor. I recommend you to use Visual Studio Code because it has a lot of nice features. So then drag the folder to your Visual Studio Code or whatever code editor it is. Open up your project folder which we just created. And now here just create one single file which is index.html. We'll have no more files, this is the only file we'll have. So then type HTML colon 5 and here in the document title write slide puzzle. Now in your document just create one single div element and I'll give it an ID say puzzle container. Alright, so here we have to write the script later. So for now I'm just uh, putting the tags. Then let me do a basic styling. So in style I'll have puzzle container. And here I want to add width of say 600 pixels. It will be actually nine, uh, 3 times 3 grid. So we'll have width and height of 600 pixels. And let me add border 1 pixel solid. Now you right click this and open up with live server or default browser, whatever it is. Live server will automatically reload whenever any changes occur in your code. So here we can see that there is a border. With, uh, with 600 and 600 width and height, right? So now the inner elements will be created by uh, our script. So here, let us create our script. So first, let me select the puzzle container. Puzzle container. Puzzle container, say document dot. Let me close up the sidebar. Document dot query selector. I want to select puzzle container. This will be used later for generating the grid. So first I will create a variable say puzzle. So say puzzle is an array. So here we will do different kind of modifications later. This will store the puzzle for our application. All right. It will represent the code form of our puzzle. Let's define the size of our puzzle. Size equals to 3. So it will mean that it's a 3 into 3 grid. So now for each of these uh, size, we have to create the elements, all right, the puzzle elements. And also each of the puzzle item will be represented as an object in this array of puzzle. So what we'll do, we'll create a function called uh, generate puzzle. So in this function, we have to run a for loop. Say i starts from 0. Uh, I don't want to start from 0. I want it to start from 1. Then i less than equals to size times size. So if it is a 3 into 3 puzzle, then the total elements will be 9. So that's why I'm putting size times size. Then we have to increment the i. So now, for each of the loop, we have to append. We have to push an element to the array. We have to push a puzzle item. So each of the puzzle item will have a value. I want value to have i. The value will be displayed in the puzzle element. All right. Then we'll have position will be i. And then we'll have x and y position, which will store the left and top values, which will be used to render uh, using uh, CSS code. So in x, we have to use a little bit of formula. So what we have to do, we have to create two more functions. The first function will give us the row. So function get row. And then the second function will give us our the column, get call. So we need this function because the way that we will represent the function in our code, uh, the puzzle in our code, is in linear order, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, like that in linear order. So this will be the first row, this will, second, this will be the second row, and we'll also have columns. So we have to use a little bit of calculation to find out that. And this will be used multiple times, so we are separating it out to a function. So to get the row, we simply have to find the position so position will start for from one for the first puzzle the position is one and for the second it's two and so on so we have to get to get the row we have to first get the position and here also let's abbreviate it to pause 
So in pause, we have to return pause and it will be divided by 3 and you have to math.seal it. Alright? So how this works is that if you have the first puzzle, 1, 2, and 3. Here we'll have 3 puzzles side by side. So if you divide well, any number between 1 to 3, then it will always be less than 3 or equal to 3. So we have to seal that to find the row number. Alright? So this is the simple formula, but for get column, we have to use a little bit of calculation, uh, which is a little bit more complex than get row. So here we have to use post modulus 3, alright? Cons call equals to this. So if it is uh, 4, then it will be 1, the modulus operator. If it is 2, the column will be 2, and so on. 5, then also it will be 2. So we'll come to know that later. So also we have to add one more condition if column equals to 0. And also instead of adding 3 here, we want it to be dynamic. So let me add the size variables here instead of 3. So if column equals to 0, I want to return it as column return the size and return column. So you may not know what these are for, but only thing I can tell you is that the indexes are from 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. It's in linear order, but row and column, they are calculated differently, alright? And this will be required later. So here we will determine the positions using these functions. So we want to get the row of this position, of whatever value it is, and times we want to multiply by 200, right? So I also want to subtract it uh, by 1, the result of get row. So that the first row will have 0 pixel of x and so on. So here y will be actually, since x will use it to determine the vertical uh, position, so we have to use our get column and here we have to use get row i and I think this will work. So here we have created all the puzzle and just console log to find out what are the values of our puzzle. So generate puzzle. Now we have to call the function. Let us call the function above. Generate puzzle. And let us see the output what we get here. If you check your console, pose is not defined because pose here in column we are not taking the parameter. Let's check the pause. You can see that we have created an array with nine elements. The first value, one will have zero zero, which is here. Then it'll the second one will have x of 200, the third will have x of 400, and so on. And when it goes down, you can see that the row, the x value, it resets again. But y value is 200 now, then x is 200. So x is incrementing for 1, to 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, 9. But y is incrementing after every three values, alright? As you can see, 1, 2, 3 have the same values for y, and 3, 4, 5, all of them have the same values of y, and 6, 7, 8. They have all of them 400. So this data we can use to render using HTML. So let's create another function called render puzzle. So now let's define the render uh, puzzle. Render puzzle. So here we'll use the element that we selected here, which is the puzzle container. So here in puzzle container in our HTML, I want to set it to empty first. Then now for let i equals to zero, i equals to zero, yeah. Or we can say let puzzle item off so we can use for off loop so let puzzle item of this puzzle so puzzle is an array which contains the puzzle items so for each of these puzzle item what I want to do is puzzle container dot inner HTML I want to append a string use backticks here which is an ES6 feature so here for each of the elements I want to create a div element and here say I want to render the value so puzzle item Dot value. As you know, each of the puzzle item has a value. So this value, I want to render it right here. And also, I want to put some styling. So I will say style equals to. Let me put a style of say border, one pixel and solid. So if we just check, let's see what we find out in our browser. So this function we have to call it to see the output. So it will be render puzzle, and you save it up. You can see that it's uh, coming, all the values are coming according to the elements in the array right here. So what we want is to, we want to display them as blocks in this grid. So we can use this value x and y. 
so we have to give first width and height to this element. So since this is 600 and it can contain uh, 200 times 3, so it can contain 3 blocks, so what we can put here is uh, width of 200 pixels and height of 200 pixels. So I need to put semicolon right here. So after putting these values, let's see, yes, we can see that the blocks have nice width and height. Now we want them to be side by side, so we have to make this as position relative, so that we can uh, absolute is position uh, in those grid elements, right? So position absolute so position absolute. So that's fine. This is relative. The parent should be relative, and the child will be absolute here. So here it will be position absolute. What I want to do, I want to remove this common styling, this is too long, I just want to put uh, X and Y definition here. So I want to put a class name, it's called puzzle item, puzzle item, and just let me put it here, the common CSS styling, so puzzle item, as you can see, yes, so it's position absolute. Yes, all of them are stacked in the same place right now. Now we have to use this data X and Y, so let us use it now. So let's say the left, it's not X, it's left, since it's already position absolute in this class uh, style rule. So in left, I want to use this template value, pixel, and in top, it will be whatever top value the pixel is. So here the value is puzzle item, puzzle item dot X, all right? So this x which we have stored and calculated according to the column and row, this value we'll use right here. So again, another one is puzzle item dot y. So now save it up, and you can see that we have a nice grid, nice grid set up one after the other because of the perfect values that we have calculated. Now we want to make these numbers a little bit large, so let's do a little bit more styling, so making it display flex and so on. So let's make it display flex. Justify content center, align item center, align items center. Now you can see they are centered, their font size are small, so font size 2 EM. Yes, they are now perfect. Also give some background color, background color, say hash DDD, so light gray color. Save it up. You can see that our puzzle is rendered and we are ready to put our logic now. So now our next step is to randomize the values, right? We want the values to be placed in random order. So what we'll do, we'll create another function called randomize puzzle. So let's define after render puzzle function randomize puzzle. Now to randomize the puzzle, we just want to set, uh, replace the value, this value right here of the puzzle, which is displayed right here. We just want to change them. We don't want to touch the position, all right? The position will be in whatever order it is. Just the values will change. So here we have to first create an array of random values, all right? So let's say values equals to, or let's define a small function, get random values. So if we have three times three, which is nine elements in the grid, we want to generate an array of nine random values. So let's define here values equals to this. And let's say for let i equals to zero, I mean, just for a simple purpose, let's create an element and fill it up with an array of elements. So i less than size times size, i plus plus, or if you want to run it from i, since the value starts from i in our case, for this example, all the values start from 1, not from 0. So i starts from 0, less than equals to size. So we just want to push values, this value of i. Then we want to create a random value, random values equals to We'll use a technique now in JavaScript, which is like a trick to uh, randomize values, to shuffle all the values. So values.sort. So here you have to return uh, a positive or negative value. If the value is positive, it will come after the comparing element. All right, it compares A and B. So we won't use A and B parameters right here, but what we'll do, we'll use mat.random. And since you know random is generated, random value is generated between 0 point something to 0 0.99 something, not 1. So we want to subtract it by 0 0.5. So if it is 0 0.9, it may be greater, it will be positive. So if it is less than 0 0.5, this random value, then it will be negative number. So th in this way, I mean, this will be randomized and return random values. 
if you think a little bit then you'll come to know how this works so now this will return us random values array so in randomized puzzle I want to just get the random values const random values equals to this so I would just want to console log the random values random values and to see the output we have to run this function so before rendering I want to randomize so that's why I'm putting it before that so now if you can see that 4, 7, 6 like this 1 to 9 the random values are being generated so if you reload and check you can see the random values are being generated now we want to loop all through the puzzle items and insert these random values we will loop linearly we will not loop in random order so i less than size but we can say there is a better way so we can say let puzzle item of puzzle so puzzle is an array and puzzle item is the item is an object so this puzzle item dot value we just want to update the value to random values of i so now we don't have the index so let's say index is zero and let's say i plus plus uh, after this so this will be put here and if you can reload you will see that the values are being updated randomly all right so now we need to hide a random piece of the puzzle all right because if it is uh, in the slide puzzle one to nine we need to hide one of the puzzle one of the item actually the ninth item we need to hide so the last item we need to find out and hide it and we need to hide this element itself this nine value so find out the nine puzzle puzzle with the value of nine <coughs> so cons puzzle with value of nine or whatever i'm too verbose <coughs> sorry so puzzle with value of nine equals to you can say puzzle dot find uh, item where item dot value is equal to nine or you can say size times size which is the last element so let's log our puzzle with value of nine puzzle with value of nine is this one right here so we want to hide it so to hide we want to use uh, a value called disabled so here if we use disabled false we will create a property disabled false for all of the elements in the beginning and then we will set disabled to the one which we want to hide so this element right here we want to hide so we say disabled equals to true so now if we try to log out all the puzzle i want to just hide puzzle with value of nine and one more log is here which i want to hide then after we set it to disable i want to console log puzzle to see if the array element has been modified and let's find out 0 to 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, this 9 value right here. Disable this true, which is perfect, and others, all of them have disabled false, but for this value of 9, this value of 9, we have disabled as true. So now, we don't want to render this if disabled is true. So in our function of render puzzle, here, we want to skip the uh, rendering if puzzle item dot disabled, then we just want to continue the loop. We don't want to run the rest of the part of the loop. So as you can see now, every time we don't have 9 now in random places. Correct? Now we'll add event handling so that we can move the elements left, right in this way. So go back to your code editor and let's add event handler. So let's say handle input. So this will be the function right here. We'll define down there function handle input. So here we'll say document uh, document dot add email listener. There will be email listener say key down. So whenever we press any key on the keyboard, this will run. So then handle key down like that. Another function we have to make now handle key down. So we are uh, creating the code modular, which is easier to understand when we do like that. So here we will get an event object. Which, with which you can determine whether left arrow, up arrow, whatever it is pressed. So I just want to log out e dot key to find out what value we have whenever we press. Now if I press the left arrow key, you can see arrow left. If I press right, up, down, arrow down. So we can switch this value e dot key, switch e dot key, and we can create cases. Say arrow left. Make sure you match the name exactly. If uh, the cases all right capital case whatever it is make sure you match them otherwise it will not work then you break it up we don't need the braces so here arrow left i want to copy it four times three more times 
next is arrow right, then next is arrow up, and finally it's arrow down. So for each of these, we want to create another function, I mean multiple function, called move left, move right, move up, like that. So just copy it three more times. So it's repetitive, I know that, but it's a cleaner code. So move uh, right, then I want to have move, move up, then I want to move it down. So here we also need to call them whatever function we apply. So move left, let me just write first. Arrow right, then you have to move right. Arrow up, you have to move up. Arrow down, you have to move down. The puzzle, right? So now what we want to do, whenever we click the down arrow key, we want to move the 4 down. We want to find the piece above the empty piece. Example, if we move left, we want to move 7 to the left. Because we want to find the right one uh, of the empty piece, okay? So that logic, to find the right piece or the left piece, we have to create again more functions, four more functions for them. So let's continue. So we have to create certain helper functions. So we have to create get empty piece, function get empty piece, uh, get empty puzzle, or yeah, get empty puzzle. So the empty puzzle we can find by returning simply directly puzzle.find where item where item dot disabled where item is disabled that piece is the empty piece all right so this will give us the get empty puzzle now we need to create functions as I have already told you to get the right piece of the empty piece or to get the above piece or if we reload to get the left piece right piece because we have to find the piece that we want to move all right if we want to move up we have to find the piece just below the empty piece or if we have to move right we have to find the piece just to the left one left side of the empty piece or if we have to move five to the right when we click left we have to move five to the right and empty piece to this side so we have to create this function so i may sound confusing right so but let us define the functions function get right piece or get right puzzle so get right puzzle, it means that get the right puzzle which is right to this empty piece, all right, which is 5 in this case. So, or in this case, it will be null if we have no right piece. So in this way, we'll create three more times. So get right puzzle is required, then we need get left puzzle, then we need get top puzzle, not top, get above puzzle of the empty piece, then get below puzzle of the empty piece. So we want to move up, we want to get 7, then move it up. So first we have to create the logic for that. So in get right puzzle, first you have to get the empty empty puzzle. Empty puzzle equals to empty puzzle equals to get empty puzzle. So first we get the empty puzzle. Then now to get the right puzzle, we have to do a little bit of calculation and a little bit of thinking. So we want to get puzzle by position, okay? So if this position is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this position is 6, the value is not 6, the value is 6 right here, but this position is 2. Here the position is 6, so we want to get the position just before this. So if the position is 6, we want to get position 5. If the position is uh, 4, we want to get position 3. And since you know the positions are stored in linear order, in our case, so 1, 2, 3, so we can simply subtract the value unless and until unless and until it's the first column all right so if it is the first column we don't want to find the left piece as we know if it is the first column like this one this is the first column right so this does not have a left piece to move so to get the left piece it will be null in this case so by the way it's get right puzzle so the definition will be for the right side so we want to get puzzle by position so we have to create one more function for that. So let's define get puzzle by position. Get puzzle by pos. So here we have to get a parameter pos, and we just return puzzle dot find the item where item dot position the item the position equals to pos, right? So wherever the position matches, we want to get it. So now empty puzzle cons the position for the puzzle. So cons puzzle equals to get puzzle. We want to get the puzzle by position. So we want to get the right puzzle, right? We want to get the right puzzle of the empty puzzle. Get the puzzle just right 
to the empty puzzle, right? So in this way, this will be similar for left puzzle. Just left the empty puzzle. We'll define later. So get puzzle by position. So if this is the empty puzzle, the position of this puzzle plus the position of the next one. So this position we want to get it. So we will say empty puzzle dot position. As you know, we have a position property because whenever we created the puzzle, we appended this all properties, this valuable properties here to represent the structure in our code. So to represent the state of our code. So position plus one. All right. So that's what we want to do. So before this, before getting the puzzle, what we want to compare though is that if the row, if get row, empty puzzle the position. So if position is whatever, we want to get the row. We want to get the column. Sorry. So if column equals to one, not one. If column equals to size, which is the last column right here. So if column is three right here. So if index is 1, 2, 3, then the column is 3. Or if index is 4, 5, or 6, the column is still going to be 3. So if it is at the right edge, we won't have any right piece after the empty puzzle, isn't it? So if empty puzzle is at this right edge or this right edge, we don't have any more empty puzzle. So we have to return null. So what I want to do, I want to create is right edge equals to I want to copy this logic here. So if it is at the right edge, we will simply want to return null. We don't want to return any right puzzle. If it is not right edge, however, we want to return this puzzle, get puzzle by position, and then simply you return that puzzle value. All right. So this logic right here, we have to copy it down for other uh, also. So get left puzzle. Now to get the left puzzle of this value, if it is at the first edge, if it is in the first column, we don't want to return anything. So here the condition is reversed. If get column of this position equals to 1, then I want to do is left edge first of all. Then I don't want to return anything. And here I want to subtract by 1 because I want to get the left puzzle. So if you follow this similar logic, you can get the above puzzle, you can get the below puzzle. So we will test them after defining. So get the puzzle just above the empty puzzle. And this one get the puzzle just below the empty puzzle. So is top edge. So if it is at the first row, if it is the first row, not column this time, remember that. If it is the first row, then we don't have any puzzle above that, right? So if it is top row, is top edge. So empty puzzle dot position, not get column, this time get row. So if row is 1, which is the top edge, then we don't want to return anything. And here, instead of subtracting by 1, we have to subtract by size, alright? Because the positions are stored linearly. And to move from this row to this row, say if position is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 5 position. So if I want to go back to above 1, which is position 2, I have to subtract uh, 5 minus 3. I have to do 5 minus 3, which is I have to subtract 3 from 5. So then we will come here. So we have to subtract the size of the grid right here, which is 3 as we have stored here, which you can change later if you want. Correct? Yes. So get above puzzle, then we have get below puzzle. So for below puzzle, we have to check if it is bottom edge. So if it is bottom edge here, so example, I, can, I have to give you example. So here, in this case, we have the empty puzzle at the bottom. So we don't have any more puzzle below that. Correct? So that's why we want to return null. So get column here, the condition will be if it is size, which means if it is the last row, then it will be, here also it will be row, not column, by the way. So if the row is last, then we don't want to return anything. Otherwise, we want to get the puzzle by adding size, okay? But not by adding one, because we want to move down. Then we return the puzzle. So these functions we will use right here now for moving left, right, up and down. So to move left, we have to first get the left puzzle. Okay, we have to get left puzzle equals to, sorry, to move right, to move left, we have to get the right puzzle, not the left puzzle. Because the right puzzle we are bringing to the left. So right puzzle equals to, you can say, get right puzzle. So this will simply return us the right puzzle. 
we also want the empty elite empty puzzle get empty puzzle now right here I just want to console log what we get as the right puzzle and also the empty puzzle of course to see if our logic is working correctly and let us remove all the other console logs let's search for all the other console logs like random values comment it out we don't need them otherwise they'll just pollute key down okay let it be there and move left fine so now whenever we click left we uh, let's test this case this you can see the empty one is at the right uh, right side which is the right edge so left should be null so if we click you can see the second value is null which is correct and the empty value is disabled true is correct the empty puzzle which is 9 value which we have hidden so its position is 6 which is also correct 1 2 3 4 5 6 this position but the right side as you can see the second parameter is null which in our console log this one right here but if we reload this time and click left we should get 2 as you can see we are getting 2 now because the right piece is 2 right here so now what we want to do we want to swap the value swap we want to bring 2 here and we want to take the empty puzzle there so what we need to do we simply need to update the position okay we need to update the position and also we need to update the x value right here alright so let's do that uh, let's create another function called swap swap positions so first puzzle second puzzle so we want to swap the positions okay so let's say let temp the temporary variable is for the first puzzle the position then in first puzzle as you know this is a swapping algorithm very simple one first puzzle will be second puzzle dot position we just want to swap the position first we have done swapping of position so we need to do second puzzle dot position equals to the temp value what we store there also we need to swap not only the position but also the the dimension x and y values right so we have to say temp again equals to first we have replaced the position right here and since it's an array, array element I think I think that it will update the value uh, even if we are running the code in the function so first puzzle dot x okay now the next thing is to determine whether it's x or y so let's say is x so false false if is x is true okay so if is x is true then first puzzle will uh, compare x first puzzle dot x we want to change it to second puzzle we just want to swap the value of x and y if it is y i mean for this up and down value it will be y for left and right it will be x and also the position needs to be swapped so we have done the position swapping position swapping we need to do next to this um, x position swapping or whatever it is first puzzle then it's second puzzle dot x equals to temp now if it is not x must be y so must be y so just copy it to swap the y values so second puzzle dot y we can just use this it's all right so we have done swapping of this we don't want to return anything we just want to call this function however so swap positions we want to swap empty puzzle with the right puzzle so we want to swap the values so let us find out if we swap successfully after swapping uh, we have to do some logging actually so we have to say before swapping before swapping is this one and after swapping after swapping let's find out the values so if we click the left one so before swapping we have position 7 and position 8 but after swapping you can see the position is 8 of the value 9 and the position is 7 here and also you can see x and y value being inverted or not I think for value 9 x was 0 y was 400 yes you can see wait a minute I think this has not worked for value 1 you can see that the x is still 200 yes that's correct because we are not sending the value the idea that that is x is true here it should be swapping x it was actually swapping this one y value 
So now you can see that yes, the X and Y has been swept for left. Handle key down of null. All right, all right. So if it is null, if right puzzle is null, we don't want to run. We want to run only if right puzzle is not null. So this case right here. So what we want to do, we simply want to copy this now. Move right. Okay, let's do move right first. So to move the right puzzle, to move towards the right, we have to first get the left puzzle. The left puzzle. And we want to swap X. Alright. Next we have to do for the top one. Move up and move down. So get empty puzzle. So instead of get left puzzle to move up, we have to get the below puzzle. Below puzzle. So is X is false. It is not X, it is Y. So the else condition will run in the swap position function. So here move down we want to get the above puzzle above puzzle now with all of this the swapping will be done okay the x and y whatever the swapping is required will be done getting all the puzzle then after doing all of this handling of input we need to render the puzzle again render puzzle just simply call the function as you know that in render puzzle function we first clear the element and then recreate the puzzle according to the puzzle item order and we set the x and y position so let's run it and you can see it's working so if we have no down it will not come so if you click right one will move up uh, right if you click up five will move up if you click two so it's working and it's playable now so let us try to solve it and let's have some fun so i don't know to solve actually so to solve this uh, puzzle, I think you have to bring 1 and 3 first. Then you have to bring 2 just below 3. Then 6 bring down. Then now the first row is in place. Next, you have to bring 7 uh, below the 4, I think. I watched a YouTube video to solve. So let's see. Yes, 4 is below 7. Now 5 and 6. I'm stuck actually here. Uh, uh, I don't know how to solve that. But you try it out in your home. So what is, we are stuck is 8 should have been here and 6 should have been here. So you reload, it will shuffle and randomize the value. Let me just try one last more to see if I have any luck. So let's uh, bring 3. You have to bring 2 uh, below 3, that's fine. Then 4 below 7. So 4 below 7. Let's jumble up, jumble up. Go right. Yes, yeah, and yes, 6, 5, still bad luck. This time 4, 6, 5. It's solvable. It's very much solvable. If you know how to solve, then you can do it. And thank you for watching this video of this Mern stack. And if you like this channel, then please subscribe in. And I'll have more videos in the future like this with Mern stack or this kind of short projects and games. So thank you for watching and see you later.